Let's talk about Truck Week. It's day three right here on News Nation. We're seeing the world through the eyes of truck drivers. You're going to have to spend time with one, actually, to get that perspective. And that's why we sent a senior national correspondent, Brian Inton, to do that. Nearly 400 miles out on the road from North Carolina to Pennsylvania and just one delivery. Brian joining us now from a truck stop in Miami. Brian, these men and women, they spend hours on the road, and that comes with a lot of sacrifice. It does, and it was a long journey, even just for us, 400 miles. It took eight or nine hours. There were so many delays along the way, which you're going to see. Uh, it is morning here in Miami along I-95. A lot of these truckers are starting to wake up because they drive throughout the night, so they get up a little bit late. And I want to show you what happens is they come over here to the showers. It's $13 per shower. They pay the truck stop. Give you kind of an idea of what life is like for them. Uh, they come in here. They get ready for the day. This is actually a very nice truck stop here uh, in Miami. So they shower. Uh, get ready, uh, and then they will hit the road for another very, very long day of driving. Let's go. Papa's got to go to work. This is the hardest part of truck driver Chris Emi's day. All right. Have fun at school. <laughs> I love you. Saying goodbye to his wife and four-year-old in Raleigh, North Carolina. And after a quick send-off, I jump in, and we're off. They tell you when you sign up that you're going to be away from home. It's different when you live that. It's much different to be out on the road without your family, without talking to anyone face to face for a couple days. First stop is getting the trailer and doing a safety check. Then we head to a distribution center to pick up our load for the trip. First we weigh in and then we wait and wait and wait. It really is a lot of waiting. We're here at this distribution center supposed to pick up sweet potatoes. It was supposed to happen very fast. We've already been waiting a couple of hours. All of that time, Chris does not get paid. With all the waiting, it's a good time to have lunch. Chris's norm is PB&J. You, you don't get paid uh, while you wait. A lot of the, the industry is paid by the mile for the most part. So if the truck's not rolling, you, you aren't getting paid for, for the time that you sit, sit at, the, at these receivers. We waited another two hours, and not only is Chris not getting paid, there's nowhere to use the restroom. The bathroom problem is a big is, has become worse with COVID. You'll get to a receiver, and then they'll make you sit there six hours, but they don't let you go inside to use the restroom. And a lot of them have put porta potties in the parking lot, and there's trucks all around. You're in the middle of a hot parking lot in a porta potty that is one porta potty for could be a hundred trucks at that facility that night. Finally, the loading begins. And an hour later, the truck is full of sweet potatoes, and we're off. It seems there's a lot of unpredictable variables with trucking. Every day, there's there's a possibility for unpredictability. We're driving from Raleigh, North Carolina to Mountainville, Pennsylvania. It's 400 miles and about six and a half hours. Diesel is one of the biggest expenses for truckers, but Chris knows a secret gas station off the highway with cheaper prices. This is a little gem here on, on, on I-95 and uh, fuel prices can be anywhere from 20 to 40 cents cheaper than a mile down the road. At, at my max, I'll take 200 gallons of fuel. You know, you do that twice a week, three times a week adds up to a lot of money at the end of the year. After we fill up, get a little coffee. Thank you so much. And we're back on the highway. How much night driving do you do? Do you do a lot of overnights? Uh, yeah, I, I'd say the majority of my driving is mainly between the hours of three and three. Most truckers prefer driving at night because the roads are less crowded. And after a very long day, we finally make it to the drop-off warehouse. But there's bad news. So we just made it um, to our destination where uh, we're going to deliver the, the goods, but the lot is totally full, so there's nowhere uh, to park and actually sleep for the night. This is a very common problem for truckers. Finding a place to sleep is not easy. Chris asks around, but there are no spots available, and the warehouse will not unload his sweet potatoes until morning. I'm going to pull up and turn around. Finally, Chris finds a spot to park. And that boys is it for the night. And with that, Chris has a chance to rest. Kick my shoes off. The back of his truck is also his home away from home. 
He'll sleep a couple of hours before waking up bright and early to unload and start it all over again. And that sleeping issue uh, is really a big one. Rest stops all over the country are full. So uh, when truckers get in late, there's really nowhere for them to park. Many of them end up having to park out along the highway, uh, which you can imagine can be a real safety issue. Adrian? Yeah, I was feeling his pain, thinking, what would I do if I couldn't find a restroom or someplace to just get a nap? Thank you so much, Brian. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to click on the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.